So, yeah. I'm here with Charlie Raposo, British ski team member. Hi, Charlie. How are you doing? Very well. Nice to, to see you. Here. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Yeah, you too. Um, so, I think so obviously we're in Solden now. Mm -hmm. um, where have you just come from? I was in Pidstall for the last couple of weeks, okay. just around the corner. So it's been uh, been a busy October, kind of darting around. October's yeah. always a scramble. Right, um, okay. You know, finding the conditions that are going to be best suited for what you need and how to make the most of the opportunities available. But we've had a good prep period over there, actually. Rugged, but good. So what, what, is the snow, what has the snow been like on the glacier then when you were training? This, this been good. Of, it's it been, been right? uh, Yeah, no, it's been really good. They watered the hill three weeks ago. Right. So it's been um, icy, bumpy, yeah. bit of aggressive, bit of everything, to be honest. And okay. that's good. That's like, it's no bad thing having a tricky. I mean... In theory, if Solden was like it usually is, it would have been a lot more difficult in pit style than Solden. But yeah. I do think we're in for a bit of a battle tomorrow, so we'll yeah, see how sure. it shapes up. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, unfortunately today, we're sitting here, it's, it's a Saturday. The mm -hmm. women's race has been uh, cancelled due yeah. to heavy snow, well, heavy and wet snow. Yeah, on heavy, heavy rain, snow, the lovely cocktail we, we very much dislike. And how do you think that's going to affect the race tomorrow? Like, do you go into that thinking it's going to be a lot softer and and change what you're um, going to do, or it's going to be one of two ways? It's either going, well, a, I just heard there from Fist Mike, who's responsible for a lot of what goes on around equipment and uh, control in finish areas. Um, they've slipped. They've thrown a ton of salt. They yep. don't think it's going to freeze. So we'll see what we get tomorrow. Okay. You know. It, it's really going to depend on how the salt takes in the snow. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be rugged. It's not going to be like anything any of us have prepared on. Right. Um, so we'll definitely be different. Yeah. So I think we've just got to see what we get when it comes. You okay. Know? I, I think there's a 65 to 70 percent chance we race, and that's me leaning on the side of optimism. Right. And there's a lot of people that would tell you that they think it's a lot less. Okay. Uh, and then I'm sure there's some athletes that go, yeah, 100 percent we're racing. Does our mindset? I'm pretty <laughs> sure we're going to race, and you okay. prepare the same way. But I yeah. think we've just got to pray that kind of Mother Nature and the things that Fiss are doing are going to work in our favour. I mean, we've just heard today as well that the the first uh, match of in your uh, downhill's been cancelled. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think holding races at this time of year is a sensible move from the International Ski Federation when you're launching a new race like that, and the first time they've done it, it hasn't happened. We'll see what happens the weekend after. I think, uh, <laughs> tricky one to answer. Solden's yeah. never really been an issue. No, no, sure. So from yeah. my opinion, I think that Solden should fly. Yeah. And Or normally always does. Yeah. You know, even this year when they had so many issues with the amount of snow on the glacier, yeah. they were able to deliver. Yeah. Um, I think... Zermatt Chivinia, I've never been there, so I don't understand, but okay. I know that obviously last year was a really bad winter snow year. Yeah, sure. And that made a massive impact on how the glaciers were this summer. And a hot summer. And I'm sure that that played a role in why that slope is not ready. Yeah. I don't know. I, from what I've, heard, yeah. it's the, what I've heard, it's the bottom of the slope, which I don't know if that's glacier or not. No. So I don't know. It's not glaciers. Oh, I don't think so. So in that case, yeah, it does come down to the warm temps and what they can blow in October. Yeah. You know, here it works because they are blowing on top of ice. Yeah, right. So they do have a glacier here, whereas clearly Zama Chavinia, they're relying on a bottom half of the slope that is not glacier. Yeah. And that is probably going to be a problem, yes. Um, I think we've got to look at it from the perspective of, like, why does the season need to end in, in March, for example? Okay. Right, you know, we've got high altitude resorts where in theory we could be pushing longer. Yeah. But we're scrambling to get stuff in earlier right. when all that's doing is making it more difficult for the teams to prepare. Okay. In theory, like the speed guys have now been massively pushed to get ready for now. Normally they get that whole Colorado sure. Nakiska period. Yeah. Whereas now it's like, okay, you've got to be ready end of October. Right. Um, that would be my one observation. And I think, you know, when, when people say, where are we going to be in 10 years with global warming and snow? Low altitude resorts will suffer. High altitude resorts are going to be totally fine. Yeah, sure. The snow isn't going to go away, but it's, no. uh, it's going to change the landscape as to which and where we can have races. So just going backwards now a little bit, we're quite 
a long way, I guess. Where did you start skiing? I started skiing in Verbier, Switzerland. So that's where you learned to ski? Yeah, that's where I learned to ski. Okay. So started there at seven and then right. started racing there at 11 and then shortly after sort of entered the British racing system Okay. Uh, from 11 to 14 and then at 14 went to the US to ski academy in Vermont. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, Verbier, I know Verbier myself very well. I lived there for five years. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's not really well known as a, as a racing uh, resort yeah. or a race training resort. So did you get tempted by all the free ride skiing that Verbier has um, um, drawn away from that? Not or you... really, no, because right. at a young age, I think a ski instructor was kind of like, oh, I should try racing. There were some options. Yeah, you're right, it comes from a free ride heritage, but yeah. that, that will be changing. Um, <laughs> they've got Swiss national champs there this year, okay. which is a big like, deal. Oh, right, so they've okay. got downhill super GS slalom yeah and i don't think it will be long before they are having well juniors european cups women's world cups men's world cups world champs oh, interesting right i think i think they will pursue that i don't yeah. think they're doing swiss national champs as a one-off i think okay they've got goals to to move forward because they recognize that that's a an amazing opportunity to bring people in and create just more of a story for the resort yeah right mm -hmm. and how are the new skis it's going good it's going very good it's um a hell of an opportunity and an honor to be in that position. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited to to start this journey with these guys. You know, first race tomorrow, but many yeah. seasons ahead. Yeah. Uh, and really, you know, help have these guys help me to make that next step in my career. You know, which is uh, it's clear that there's potential to do that. We saw that last year, and now it's about executing on that and making those next steps. And obviously, for anyone watching or listening to this, you know, we're talking about Marcel Hirsch's new company, mm -hmm. uh, Van Deer. And mm -hmm. um, I guess I don't know uh, Marcel, but from what I understand and from what everybody talks uh, about him, he's an incredibly focused, driven, crazy character who mm -hmm. uh, is going to push every single detail and every single limit. And, and do you, is that something that you relish yeah. or? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Okay. It's awesome. I'm. Yeah. Everything that's that's going on is is just an exciting um, aid to to what we're trying to build towards as a right. goal. Yeah. Um, you know, these guys embody skiing and ski racing in the same way that I do, with like pure passion, pure drive for it. Mm. Um, and I think that's so. It's a, it's a great match for that sense, and it's a it's a new brand trying to transcend the sport, do things differently, step outside the box, be different. Um, yeah. That's something that I. I love and I want okay. to be a part of and I want to be doing myself yeah. as Charlie. Okay. And is that financially helping you as well? Yes. Okay. So that's probably more obviously since funding was being cut mm -hmm. recently, that's obviously going to give you a massive boost then. Yeah. I mean, I think if I wasn't there, I this situation with, with British skiing and GB snow sport is very bad. Yeah. Um, we won't dive into it too much today because there's not much more to say to it other than yeah. that there's, there's mismanagement across the board as to how they're trying to sell Alpine and right. take that vehicle and move that forward and bring in commercial money. Yeah. You're here in Solden. You've yeah. seen everything that's going on. You've seen this sport is healthier oh, yeah. and more lucrative than ever. Yeah. Right? It's incredible. When you've got a five or six athlete team scoring World Cup points. Yeah at the level that they are in Great Britain, and you see the excitement around British ski racing when you're at events, yeah, you can make some money out of it. So that's all I'll say on the matter. Yeah. I'm super lucky and fortunate to be at Van Deer Red Bull Sports, where I have a serviceman from the company. Right. Uh, okay. I have a load of other resources that come my way. Yeah. So my dependency on GB Snow Sport is obviously still very much there. Of course. They're still the governing body that run, run yeah. my program. Yeah. But I am not... Uh, drowning right now that's per se i mean you know there's obviously an opportunity right for brands you talked about how successful the sport is mm -hmm. and you know you can see it here in Solden in the press conferences the amount mm -hmm. of people the amount of exposure the sport gets mm -hmm. it's got to be an opportunity hasn't there for someone to come along and it's take a some huge opportunity um <laughs> if i wasn't a ski racer i'd i'd brand the team up myself package it together and i'd be willing to do that but i am ski racing but unfortunately, um, yeah, I, I, I don't believe we're being sold in the right way as, as an Alpine unit. Yeah. Um, we have a CEO that's never come to a World Cup race. She's been CEO for four years. 
So right. the, that's a statement that I'm just willing to put out there now. How can you understand the sport if you don't come and see it? Like, you know, the hype that exists within the sport. I find that quite sport. incredible, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the hype that exists within the sport and the energy, you know, it's, it's, it's a mini Formula One. You've seen that. Yeah, sure. You're seeing it here. Yeah. This is not like any of the other winter sports that exist, except right. for maybe the X Games. Yeah, sure. you know, maybe the X Games has got this level of hype, but again, very different crowd, very different clientele, different kind of uh, audience yeah. engaging in the sport. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, the race, um, and for the rest of the season then, you, you're going you're gonna to hit sort of World Cups and Europa Cups and Norams this year again, or are you going to try uh, For and... sure, I don't think any Norams. Uh, we'll okay. do some Europa Cups, you know, yeah. because we've got a gap from... Lech is on the 13th of November and we don't have Valdez till the 12th of December. Yeah. So there's two Europa Cups in there that we'll hit. Uh, we'll see, see, where we, see where we're at. Definitely. Yeah. Look, there's, there's so little GS racing that it's nice to do the European Cups as well. Yeah, of course. Um, but we'll just pick and choose the program accordingly because the travel, the race days, it is very taxing. Yeah. And we do want to prioritise what we're doing at a World Cup level. Okay. Well, good luck for... Um, Good luck for tomorrow thank you. in the race. Very kind, thank you. Uh, top 30 is your goal? Of course. Okay. Of course, getting in there is the goal. Yeah. You know, I mean, look, I think more importantly than, than just top 30, I think the goal is to execute some seriously strong skiing. Yeah. Where that stacks me up, TBD. You know, the, the, the higher, the better. Um, yeah. But I know that, yeah, clear goal is getting to that second run and then with a clean course, do what I know how to do. Are you hoping that Henrik's going to pull something off tomorrow as well i i've we've been skiing together i think he's looking good I yeah. think he's looking strong i hope he uh delivers on on what he wants i mean we all know he's got a high high benchmark for what he wants out of himself yeah sure um so we'll see how that shapes up for him i interviewed him a couple of days ago actually and mm -hmm. i i teased him slightly about just uh you know losing out to dave in kitzbühel uh mm -hmm. By, uh, well, he was third, wasn't he, in Kitzbühel? Yeah, he was third. And, uh, Lucas was second. Yeah. Luke, Lucas was uh, second. But um, he kind of enjoyed that. And uh, I, I said to him, he looked, he looked as happy as he'd ever done by, uh, when he lost. Mm -hmm. And he kind of agreed with that. So, yeah. I mean, having a team, is he, would you consider him a teammate, kind of? Yeah, I mean, yeah. in some ways. But I think it's, it's different, you know, like being at the same company, there's, there's an element of team within it. But obviously, we are our own teams at the same time. Yeah, of course. But, you know, we're trying to work towards one goal. And this is the early stage of being a part of a brand that's doing big things so yeah we're all working together in a different way than you are if you're one of the the old school classic brands yeah you know, that's got a huge team and a yeah. very established way of working i mean in terms of your discipline giant mm -hmm. slalom you know obviously we've got we've got dave and and the other guys billy mm -hmm. and uh, laurie right. on the slalom side mm -hmm. doing brilliantly you know we have had a history of downhill ski races in the past mm -hmm. that have done well on the on the men's side yep uh, and the women's side, of course, mm -hmm. but not so many GS races. Is yeah. there a reason for that, do you think? Um, Other than the fact that it's probably the hardest technical discipline there is to yeah, race. I, yeah, <laughs> I think, oh, I'm glad you said that. I don't, I don't necessarily want to be the one that said it. I, I'm not going to say it's the most competitive because right. I, don't, I, think slow, like, I think they're all very competitive, but I think it's incredibly grueling on the body and taxing. It's a very yeah. natural flow of ski racing. Yeah. Um, there is a there is a natural flow to GS that I think is, yeah. You, know, you can have good slalom skiers and, and a slalom race with zero flow in a course. You right. don't you don't get that in GS. GS doesn't work if there's not a flow to the course. Yeah. Um, it's really difficult to say. You know, obviously we, we we've got these dry slopes. Like slalom is just the yeah. go-to. It always has been the go-to. So it's easy to slot into. Yes. Um, it's easy to follow in the footsteps of a lot of the guys that have gone before you. Sure. Um, I don't think I quite realized, uh, for lack of a better way to putting it, how unsuccessful of a nation we were in giant slalom right. until this year. I didn't realize it had been 54 <laughs> years. Um, you know, I, I figured, you know, a couple people had done it before. I wasn't really certain. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, look, it's a, it's a tricky discipline. It's clearly very grueling on the body. You yeah. won't really see a good GS skier after 32 years old. Sure. Whereas in the other disciplines, you will see good skiers later than that. Yeah. Or older than that. Um, so it's just about trying to do, do what I can while I'm here, you know? And, yeah, right. and I hope that there are young Brits that are going to yeah. come up and join and, and be a part of uh, the GS team at some point. Yeah, sure. You know, while my career is still going. Yeah, right. But I also know that, you know, 
we've got to see what happens in the future. Okay. So we've got the, it's quite a lot of noise in here, isn't it? We've got the American team uh, just like right next to us. There is shouting a lot around, of noise, making a lot of noise lot like of the energy. American team does. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was brilliant. That was really good to speak to you, Charlie. Oh, and, it's um, lovely to catch up. Yeah. Have a great day. Uh, have a great season. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, cheers. Appreciate it. Okay. Ciao. Thanks.